So in the last class, we were talking about, um, we started talking about decoders, then we went on to talk about encoders, then uh, priority encoders, and now we are talking about another combinational logic design element, which is the tri-state buffer or the three-state buffer. And it's called three-state just because the output can be in one of the three states of low, high, and high impedance. And high impedance simply means that the output is completely disconnected from the inputs, which means that the output is a dangling wire. It is not connected to anything, hence in the, in the high impedance state. So you, you can have an enable to this, an additional input. Here is your buffer with the symbol of a triangle. So output will in, so let, let us write an equation here. So the output out will equal A and enable. So enable and A. So if enable is one, uh, no, no, no. So it's A when enable is one and when enable is zero, it is don't uh, high impedance. So you can write these two statements to characterize what this uh, tri-state buffer uh, is supposed to do. And this is extremely useful in tying multiple outputs together. And we'll see an example uh, in, in just a few minutes uh, about how you could use this in an application. Next, we saw four different flavors of the tri-state buffers depending on whether the um, enable is active low or active high, which was the first two versions, active high enable, active low enable. And the first two were buffers. And the next two were inverters with a active high enable and an active low enable. So you can have four different flavors. In two of them, you are not changing the logic of the input. So input and output are the same. And in the next two, it is an inverter. So input is uh, the complement of the, so output is complement of the input. So that's where we start. And the next thing that we'll talk about today is the use of a one bit party line. So what is this one bit party line? Well, it is a party line because all uh, it, there's a there are a bunch of inputs that are trying to share this one bit line. Those inputs we are calling them P Q R S T U V and W. So all these let me write this statement here P Q and so on up to W are arbitrary binary uh, variables just like you have x and y like being inputs to a logic diagram so p p through w are binary variables that want to share the one bit party line So all of these eight inputs want to get access to S data. S data is the one bit party line. Serial data. Now, clearly we cannot have confusion, right? Like if we cannot have P and Q control S data at the same time. We would want only one of those eight to have control over the contents of S data because P is one bit, the one bit party line is one bit. So it can only be uh, a one to one control. We cannot have more than one. And the one combinational logic element that uh, guarantees us that only one output is active at any given time is the decoder. 
So we are essentially using a 3 to 8 decoder with active low outputs. It is the 74X138 decoder. To make sure that only one of these guys is active at any given time, which means that only one of these guys will be able to take control of S data. Now let us see how this works. So I'll begin all the way on the left. So I want this to be enabled. So how do I enable this? I will mark my uh, connections with red, for example. I will say I want G1 to be enabled. So I will connect that to plus five volts or say logic one. And then I will connect the next guy to logic zero because it's an active low, active low enable. So one zero zero for the enables respectively. Done, this is enabled now. So all these guys are good to go. Next, I have three inputs, A, B, C, because it's a three to eight decoder. I'm going to say, let's say I have, uh, I, I just want to use maybe zero, some arbitrary input sequence, say zero, um, one, zero. Uh, let me say one here. Let's see what happens. Zero, one, one. Now, the first thing that you would have to do is to recognize that there is a numbering scheme here, two, one, zero. And that numbering scheme is indicating that C is the most significant input and A is the least significant input. Which means I'm supposed to read this, as, the inputs as one, one, zero. In this, in this order. So 110, what did that? It's a decimal six. What does decimal six point to? It points to the fact that only this guy can be active. The sixth one, maybe I, I draw it slightly. Only this guy can be active. Everything else should be inactive. Right, so let me draw those as pink. Inactive, 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 all of them. Only Y6 is active. Zoom out now, try to see what happens. Because only Y6 is active, that means that this tri-state buffer is going to be active. Everything else will be inactive. That means S data is going to be equal to V. So the binary variable V has taken control over S data. So S data equals V when you have all those things enabled and you have that 110 combination at the input, right? So you can quickly change that decoder input to manipulate which of those eight binary variables takes charge of S data. Whether to, it may be to write it um, and later on we'll see that it, it, it can go bi-directional uh, with certain elements. Uh, so here we are only talking about writing things to S data. L let us throw a quick question out there. What if I change this to, um, let's see, I will use maybe green here. So I want to change this slightly and say, Um, let's see, one zero zero. What is S data when the inputs are one zero zero? Notice one zero zero, I have written S S R C, the serial source as as zero as so 
this guy is the least significant. 1 is least significant. 0 is the most significant because of the numbering. Yes. So, because this is 0, 0, 1, uh, sorry, 1, 0, 0, but I need to read it in the opposite way. 0, 0, 1, which is what? Decimal 1. Decimal 1 corresponds to select Q. All right. So, that means this guy will become, act. Uh, this guy will go to S data. Good. All right. So, I hope that you see uh, how uh, you can use a decoder and a bunch of tri-state buffers to um, share a one-bit party line among eight different inputs. All right, let's move on here. Next, I have a 74x151. This is a three-state three or a tri-state driver, and it is it allows me to um, do a tri-state buffer operation on eight inputs simultaneously. So those eight inputs are A1 all the way to A8. So these are, let us see, I'm going to mark them as eight active high inputs. And they can go directly, they can map directly to eight active high outputs depending on two select inputs. Those enables, those uh, enable signals are active low. Enables, two of them are active low. And the, the diagram, the logic diagram that you see on the right is essentially what goes inside this 74X541 chip. You have two active low enables. The output of those enables is functioning as an enable to eight buffers. Notice the symbol here. These are Schmidt trigger based buffers. So that means that they have two thresholds to go from low to high but they are buffered. They are not changing or complementing the input. They are taking the input and going to the output. But they only respond to two thresholds. So what is going to happen if I make this guy say zero, this guy is say zero, what is going to happen? You are going to have a one there, one there, which means this is going to be a one there, right? So in that case, all eight of them are going to be enabled so whatever I provide over here, in that case, this will be equal to A1, this will be equal to A2, this will be equal to A3, and so on, all the way down. So whatever I give here, 0 or 1 on the input side, that will map to the output directly, 0 or 1. So this is used to uh, buffer, using a tri-state driver, 8 inputs at once. Right. Earlier, we had only one input getting buffered. Now, if you want to do for eight inputs, because in computers, you will find that you will need to do this buffering operation on maybe 32 bits at a time or 64 bits at a time. So you would need uh, uh, some chip, in this case, uh, 74x541, that is allowing you to do this operation on eight bits at a time with two enables. And those two enables, um, I want you guys to think about why they are two enables. And it's kind of the same reason as, you know, the use of multiple enables, uh, even in the in the previous, uh, previous cases where we had multiple enables. We have two enables over here, because at some point, if we want to cascade these 74x541 tri-state buffers, we can selectively activate, selectively enable one chip or the other. So you, that, that's it gives you more control on which chip is active in the case where you have set more than one 74x541 chips. 
So it's it's uh, used in cascading. So very straightforward here. Uh, one thing I would like to note over here is that the direction is only one way, left to right. Whatever you give in the input will go to the output depending on the two active low enables. Next. This is a tri-state driver application. And in my opinion, it's a very, very interesting one. And it is, uh, you know, uh, slightly uh, complicated. So I would really encourage you guys to follow along. Um, I'm going to set up the problem. Um, in, in, I'm going to start slow. So what, what are the pieces that we see right off the bat? We have the microprocessor over, over here, which is controlling the operations. We have 74x541, which is the eight um, tri-state buffers at a time, the previous chip. And you have another one over here, 74x541. And as you can see, the two active low enables are being used in a very smart way. The first 74x541 is connected to input port 1, whatever that might be, an 8-bit input port. Maybe a printer, maybe, maybe some, some input port. And there's also another input port, port number 2, for another set of user inputs. So on input port number 1, you have 8 user inputs. And on input port number two, you have a different set of user inputs. And our microprocessor is trying to read, is trying to read input port one, or maybe it tries to read input port two, which means I want to take, let's see, I'm going to try to map this. So if I'm trying to read input port one, how is the movement of data? The data is going to move this way. For input port one, first, I will need to enable this guy, right? Then my eight inputs will move this way. Then on this bus that is shared, they will move back in to the read port of the microprocessor. That's when I'm reading the user inputs on input port one. So I would need to enable this. Uh, I would need to enable the top 74x541 and I would need to disable the bottom 74x541. How am I doing that? Well, you see this, I'm trying to read which means I need to make this active. What is active here? Active is zero here, right? So if I need to make this active, this is an active low output. So I will need to make this low. If I make this low, G1 is active, right? That is fine. And also that zero is connected. So G1 is active here. So pin number ones are fine. But if I'm trying to read on input port one, I would need to activate this guy and I would need to disable this guy, which means now G2 is okay. But if you see this, G2 over here is not okay because that's a one there. So the moment this is G2 is disabled, that means that all of these will be disconnected from all of these. Which means the 8-bit bus, th this is the 8-bit bus indicated over here, data bus, DB, 0 through 7. So it's a 8-bit data bus. That data bus is only being controlled by the user inputs coming from input port number 1 in this case because we have made sure that we read it and we have input select one. 
uh, or input port one uh, select active and then we can you know uh, use other things to activate as well so we can move to input select 2 input select 3 the only criteria that we have to make sure is only one of these can be active at any given time if we have more of them then there is going to be confusion later on so we need to use some operation similar to uh, a, a decoder operation to make sure that only one of the in select n outputs are active only one of them is active at any given time and the microprocessor needs to take take uh, uh, the charge for that so the microprocessor is going to be responsible to to make sure that only one of those is active read is active when you're trying to read right so if you don't want to read maybe you want to write so you you have to make this into low uh, sorry high right because it's active low all right, questions about this? So the the that I wouldn't call it stored. The the data is I would say moving on a bus so if you want to call a bus an array it's fine so it's moving on the array but it is never being stored right because there is no memory chip that you see on uh, this diagram so that the data comes in from the user inputs goes through the drivers tri-state drivers and then moves into the microprocessor read input once the microprocessor reads the input then maybe they want maybe it wants to store it uh, but we are not going there so th there's no storing operation Th the data is just moving so the microprocessor essentially is controlling which user which set of user inputs to read from that's it should I read from input port 1 or should I read from input port 2 that's the only thing that the microprocessor is controlling but it's a simple read operation Can you guys think of an alternate way to do this? Like what would be a bad way to do this? Well, the bad way of it of to how to do this would be a microprocessor that dedicates 16 lines, eight of them coming from here, eight of them coming from here and say, okay, I don't need to do this, uh, um, you know, selection. Yes, so you can, it, it, so we are talking about this application because we want to use the same 8-bit bus to read from multiple ports. So there is a multiplexing operation that's going on. So it's a resource multiplexing. So we are sharing the resource of that 8-bit bus among different input ports. The, the bad way of doing this is to have a lot of uh, wires running from each input port to the microprocessor, which is going to be inefficient. Yes, yep, so cut out the buffers and drive all those wires, 16 in this case, and you know, the moment you go to three input ports or four input ports, you will keep increasing, um, and that, that that's simply inefficient in terms of space, in terms of, you know, at the end of the day, the microprocessor is one entity and it will be able to read only one thing unless you have uh, multiple processors running at the same time. If, the, if there is only one microprocessor, it is going to be only be able to read one thing. So why have, why not just share that resource of that 8-bit bus? Uh, 
<laughs> Charles says, I'll raise you one way. Uh, a word's way. Okay, he wants to go into the analog world. He wants to use a DAC and then use the analog switch. <laughs> sure, Charles, yes. <laughs> Alex says, just write the message on the paper. <laughs> That's funny. All right, let's move on. Now, so far, things were only moving in one direction. If you had a tri-state driver, it was going from the inputs to the outputs. But in some cases, you might need bi-directional application. So th this is a tri-state transceiver, transmitter receiver. So it can move things from A to B or from B to A depending on the direction. So let us see how uh, how this is supposed to work. So what I'll do is this. I'll, I don't know right now whether direction equals zero, what does that mean? A to B or B to A? And then direction equals one. I don't know if it is A to B or B to A. So let's try to figure that out. So first I'll do direction equals zero. So I'm gonna make this guy zero. Direction is zero. And I'm going to make this, make sure that this is enabled. So let's say I enable this by making this, it is an active low input based on the naming convention. So I'll make this active, active zero, right? Low which means this guy is going to be one here and this guy is going to be zero here, which means this guy is going to be what? Zero here. So the moment that is zero, notice what happens, right? This is zero, which means that is zero, 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 uh, da, 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 zero, zero, and zero. So all those are going to be disabled, all right? How about here? This guy is zero, that means this guy is one there. This guy is zero, that means this guy is one there. That means this is one. Let me mark this in blue. If this is one, that means this is uh, enabled, 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 enabled. So tell me, if the direction is zero and the chip 74x245 is enabled. Things are moving from A to B or B to A. Michael says B to A, which is absolutely correct. As you can see for the first case here, if this is enabled, B can go in here, it is enabled, goes out this way, but it, this guy is disabled, so A doesn't connect to B, B connects to A. So I can go in from B and come out of A. So B to A is the direction, yes. And then of course, when the direction is, uh, DIR input is one, the, the movement is going to be from A to B. So I'll just box these two guys and I will say, that we have assumed enabled, right? So we have made sure that G underscore L, the active low enable is low, so it's active. Uh, transceiver is transmitter receiver. So this can go from A to B or B to A, depending on the direction um, that you choose. All right, so I hope that was uh, helpful. Let's, that's it, okay. So I'm gonna stop the recording here for this particular lecture.